Hi everyone, my name is Liz from Sweet Suds. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I will be showing you how I make my colorful cold process soap that I did the embeds for the last video. And I'm gonna show you now what the full bar looks like. I'm not gonna reveal the name of the fragrance nor the name of the soap because I do have a contest going on and I am not gonna reveal it until April 21st. Anybody who does guess the name of the fragrance and the name of the soap, will be entered for a free bar of soap. But before I even get started, I wanted to talk to you guys about soap dough. In my last video, I basically showed you how I make my soap dough and beds. I store a lot of white soap dough. So soap dough basically is cold processed soap. That is, its enemy is the air. So you definitely want to keep it very sealed away from the air. The more sealed you have it and where it's going to retain its more moisture, the better it is and the more pliable it is. Sorcery Soaps, B from Sorcery Soaps, is the queen of the master of soap dough. So she sells soap dough. I love her soap dough. Sometimes I can't get the colors that I want. So I've now learned how to make my own soap dough. Mine is a little bit different. It's a little bit more pliable. And for the purposes of the embeds that I use and sometimes the stencils, I like it to be a little bit on the soft side. So this is what my soap dough looks like. Again, I store it in the, the cling wrap. And then basically, it's very, very soft soap. So here it is. The soap already has been cured. It's been sitting here for about 12 weeks. And like I said, I just store it in clean wrap, and then when I want to use it, I just grab a piece, and then I mold it into whatever shape I want, and then I color it into whatever color I want. Of course, you don't have to make it all white. I also make colored ones as well, um, but I do store a lot of the white soap. So I just wanted to show you guys what soap dough looks like for those of you who are new and don't know what it is. Now, here is the result of the bar that I will be showing you guys that I am making today. So here are the embeds. Again, those are made with soap dough. The soap dough was white and then I did color it and added some glitter. And then this is the inside of the soap, so check it out. It is neon colors, really, really cool. So if you guys wanna check out this soap, then follow along. So for this recipe, I will be using coconut oil, sustainable palm oil, I believe it's avocado oil, and castor oil. I will leave the recipe down in the description box below. My lye, I added sodium lactate and I added kaolin clay to anchor the fragrance. So here I am adding the lye solution to my oils. I make sure that everything is mixed in very well. I like to soap at room temperature so that I can have more time creating designs so that um, my, usual, my batter is usually around 75 degrees. So I am going to split this batter into several portions. This will be for the frosting on the top. And then I am going to use six neon colors and the base of the soap is going to be white. And there I am adding the titanium dioxide to the batter so that uh, the neon colors are not that striking. So I could tone it down a little bit because they are pretty pretty uh, strong, the neon colors from Mad Micas. And here I am adding the fragrance oil. Of course, I'm not gonna reveal what it is until the end of the month, so stay tuned for that. But all I can say is that this fragrance oil works really, really well. It doesn't rise, it doesn't accelerate, and it holds the scent retention amazingly.
So now I've added all the batter to the six colors and now I'm gonna start stick blending it. As you can see, my biggest challenge is the space that I have here. The cord keeps getting in the way of when I'm mixing everything and I'm afraid that I'm going to accidentally drop one of these pictures. So I eventually move the cord out of the way. It's just so uncomfortable to work in such a small space. It's, it becomes challenging sometimes, but I try to make it work as best as I can. As you can see, the neon colors are really, really potent. And I mean, it, the bar, I'm very happy with it. It turned out to be perfectly what I was looking for. It matches perfect with the embed. So I'm a happy camper. Another thing I wanted to bring up is I realized that I am not working with long sleeves and definitely if you are a new soaper, I highly, highly recommend for you guys to wear long sleeves. I normally do wear long sleeves, but I had to actually run an errand and I totally forgot to switch my top into a long sleeve into long sleeves so before anyone comes and uh, says something to me I, I am perfectly aware that you're supposed to soak with long sleeves thankfully I had no accidents and everything was perfectly fine so here I am basically dropping doing a drop in the pot swirl as they call it with all the different colors so I'm just rotating it adding all the six colors there as you can see and then I am going to take it and move it around and add it to my soap mold. And check out the inside of that bucket. It is so colorful. I absolutely love working with the neon colors. It's just amazing. The worst part of it though is the aftermath of washing all the different pictures. That is a nightmare, but at the end of the day, it is so worth it because I really, really love working with the neon colors. Now what I do is I add the remainder of the colors from the pitcher onto the top of the soap because I don't know if you noticed that when the colors are all mixed in, it gives it that grayish tone, even though that's not gonna be revealed on the soap because I am adding white on top. But in any event, I just wanted to add the rest of those colors and it just, oh my God, I could have even left this top as it is because it comes out really nice, but I know that it would take away from the embed. So therefore I did end up adding white at the end. I add the rest of the titanium dioxide to the frosting of the soap and like I said this is not going I'm not piping this on top I'm basically just gonna pour it because the as you can notice the top of the soap in the loaf is um, it's thick and I don't want there to be any holes 
So therefore I basically just add it, I just pour it in there and then I just mold it with a spoon. Once I add the rest of my batter, I start molding it with the end of the spoon. I, like I said, it's not gonna be a high top, but I want it to have some type of design on top so that it, you know, when I add the embeds, they look really nice. Check out those embeds, they're so cute. These again were made with the soap dough and they're just adorable. I really wanna make more of those I feel like making another soap using those embeds. I absolutely love them, they're so, so cute. Well, I made 36 embeds because I was planning to put two on each bar. This particular mold is yields 18 one inch soap bars. But what I did notice was that I did not have the markings of on, on the mold, so I was just eyeballing it. And at the end, I end up with six extra embeds. So in total, there's only 15 bars, and I added the, the rest of the embeds on some of the bars. So some of the bars are going to have three embeds, but most of the bars are going to have two. But they still look really nice, so I went with it. Now for the final touch. It isn't complete until you add glitter, right Katie Carson from Royalty Soaps? And I know that you're not watching this video, but I am thinking about you because I know that you use Into the Mystic from Mad Micahs. And here I am struggling with the tea strainer. I don't know, it's not dispersing very well. So then I go ahead and I switch and I use a brush. And I remember, yes, that's right, Katie also uses a brush. Even though she uses a round brush, not a flat one, I don't have a round one, I need to get one. But in any event, it did work out, so I ended up using that, and then I use fairy dust, and I end it with isopropyl alcohol. And here is the close-up 
of that soap. Check it out, guys. Look how nice it looks. And now for the moment that you've been waiting for. 24 hours later, and I'm ready to cut the soap. I will admit that the soap is still on the soft side. I think I used a little bit too much castor oil. As you can see, it's a little sticky. But in any event, I love the inside. It came out stunning. I will cut another bar so you guys can see what the inside looks like. It smells super amazing. I absolutely love it. It turned out just like I envisioned it, so I'm a happy camper. And here I leave you with the final pictures of the soap. This soap will be available in my shop by the end of this month. And if you like this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.